What's up, Ben Stormers? We're back on Zoom after a hiatus. We've thawed out from the ice. We're back in action, revived out of the hyperbolic time chamber like Goku, and we're ready to record and talk about everything that has transpired over the last month. Just in case, since it's been so long, my name is Diego, and I'm joined on this Ben Stormers episode by Dyer, Nico Nick, Marco, our crack producer, and Gat, aka John who is also, uh, John, uh, I'll start off with you. Uh, not to pick any bones, but can you rate your Uruguay performance during this World Cup on a scale of 1 to 10? Oh, that's why? I thought you were saying peace. You were giving it a 2? I thought he froze. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 ask me a tough question. I'm going to pretend I'm frozen trick. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's uh, fine. Let's see. Uh, I'll give you guys random, random teams. Uh, Dyer. What's up? What would you rate South Korea's performance in the World Cup on a scale of one to 10? I give it a, I give it a seven. A seven? Yeah, I give it a seven. It's a, uh, it's not high and it's not low. It's just above average, just slightly. Um, you know they they did pretty well in, in their game against Uruguay with the draw, beat Portugal. Good game against Ghana. Unfortunately, they had a terrible game against Brazil. So I give it a seven. Give it a seven, Nick. I'm gonna put you in the hot seat. What are you rating England's participation on a scale of one to ten? With their talisman Henderson, the best performer out of the bunch. Uh, I would give it a solid. We're going Dave Porn right here, seven seven. No, I could <laughs> seven four. Bro, talking about his motherfucker. <laughs> I, all I get on YouTube is just him, his ratings of pizza. I saw one, and everything <laughs> else now is just him. And the worst part is, I have to click it because I have to know. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Seven four in England. Seven four England. Okay. We're doing Marco, points. And uh you had mentioned I, I want to ask you a little bit about this. Do you have any ratings for any of the any of the matches for the World Cup? Yeah, I have one rating. Uh I think the, the over the my favorite match <clears throat> I I think I because of the amount of games that I've watched, I think it has to be the U.S. England one. Okay, how many games did you actually watch during the World Cup, Marco? I was trying to, I was trying to count. I think I watched six games. You watched six total? Yes, I watched four. So okay, I watched the, 64 the, four, the four U.S. games. I I watched. I kind of watched the final, and I think I watched one other, and that's it. So out of the 64 possible matches that you could have seen, you watched the 10. Yes. Was there a reason for that? I mean, I think I, I said it the last recording when we started talking about the World Cup. I uh -huh. have very little interest in, in, in this World Cup. I don't know if it was because of the time of the season. I don't know if it's because of all the uh, the bad press that it had um, leading up to it, the no press. Mm -hmm. Because it had bad press and then it didn't have any really good ones. Um Maybe that, that influenced me. I, I really didn't feel the the World Cup spirit. I mean, <clears throat> most of the time I was I was muted in the chat because you guys were talking about it. I'm like, eh, I'm not really watching the games. Uh, I could have. I had the chances. It's not like they were midnight, two o'clock in the morning. No, there were some of them were seven, eight o'clock in the morning, and I, I was at work and I could have watched it for no problem. I just I just found myself not being that interested. Damn. I mean, partially boycotted the World Cup. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I when we recorded uh, one of the last recordings that we did, I think we, it was the recording when Danny was part of. I said that I would, I would be down to boycott, but I wouldn't call it a boycott because I knew that I was going to eventually watch a game or two, and and me watching it, but, but basically defeat the purpose of boycotting it. So, I knew that I wasn't that interested. And I wasn't going to be really watching it. Um, but I didn't want to say I was boycotting it because, again, I was going to watch eventually a game. I was interested in what the U.S. could do um, because they were walking in with such a young team. And I expecting a little bit more, uh, mostly with the drama of, of, of uh, Reina, uh, Gio Reina. Um, mm -hmm. But aside from that, I really I really wasn't interested in like watching the other squads. Um, okay. And, I, bro, I, I barely watched the final, uh, mostly because Argentina went two up really quickly. 
Um, but we'll, I think we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, this year, this one wasn't really my, my cup of tea. That's, that's basically it. All right. Same but, question to you, Diego. Mexico rating. Mexico's rating, they don't deserve a rating. Oh my God. Mexico <laughs> did absolutely terrible. And there's so many, like all the, I think what was more exciting with Mexico's participation were all the conspiracy theories that all of my uh, bio uncles were coming up with on uh, how Tata sold uh, sold out the team. And then there was like, oh, there was a photo. He was spotted with Scaloni after the game. And and they said it was after the game, but it was probably before the game. And he was like dapping him up, telling him, I'm going to play easy on you. You can beat this team. And man, I, I think I would give them, honestly, I would probably give them the same too. I'd probably, I'd do it. <laughs> Solid too. <laughs> Damn. I, I don't even think anyone knows what guy even said. He just went like this. Like <laughs> Solid two for Uruguay, in case I need to repeat myself. You're still twitching. You can't pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, two. Two out of ten. It was terrible. It was terrible, 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 terrible. Hey, uh, terrible. Let's give the USA's rating. Yes, I think we should. I think that was something that actually I have um, – written down here for the next part of this world cup recap let's re let's actually go over collectively how the u.s did and what the performance was like okay so uh, if there's anything that comes out first i saw dyer that was ready to shoot something out maybe nico also since you just brought it up um what can we collectively agree on for the u.s's participation mind you they they are the team that went furthest no out of all the Concacaf squads if i'm not mistaken they did. Yes. They're the only yeah. CONCACAF team that got out of the group stage. They're the only one that got out of the group stage. As far as the FIFA ranking, which, again, very confusing for a lot of people, they are currently the highest ranked CONCACAF team in, in uh, 13th place, I believe. Mm-hmm. So what are we agreeing on? What are we giving the U.S. for this participation in, in, in Qatar, in Qatar? <clears throat> I think just the fact that they were able to get get out of the group, I think we we have to start them at maybe around a six, just because they got out of a got out of group and it was a group that wasn't uh, didn't look to be the easiest. It wasn't. Uh, hey, and you have to keep you have to keep in mind that only out of the six or seven of us, I can't remember who many predicted it. Only two of us had U.S. coming out of the group stage. Yeah, because whales were shit. Yes, but we know. But when we did the prediction, nobody had that. I know I was one that had him coming out in seventh, in, in second place. But I know that there was one other person. I, I, was it you, Josue? No, no, I had them uh, coming back to the states undefeated, tying all three games. I was close. Okay. They drew two. But I know there was one. I can't remember who it was. I guess it was. It was I think it was one. Eric. Was it Eric? I can't. Remember. I don't know. Maybe I can't remember. Uh, Diego picked Iran. If, or no, Nick, Nick, you picked Iran, I think. Yeah, I picked Iran. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so I mean, they're just there. I mean, the faith was not was 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 uh, was not with the U.S. side. I I, I want to say for me, I'll give him a, a, a maybe a seven, seven point one. Um, I disagree. I I, I wouldn't do higher, and 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 that's based off of two factors. There was from the get go. I always complained. I think I told Eric this once. My biggest complaint about the lineup was Wea and uh, and Musa. To me, they were the, the specifically Wea was um, very non-existent in games, except for like of course I know he scored a goal, but leading up to that goal and after that goal, nothing. In my opinion, he wasn't there. Well, the U.S. only scored three total goals in the tournament. Yeah, one well, against Wales, it, 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 one against it, it, Iran. And one against that, the Dutch. Yes, that's correct. But I mean, others can, can disagree with me. I mean, of course, you're you're right. But to me, like maybe because I had the idea that that Gio Reyna was going to be using, you was going to be in that position. And to me, your Gio Reyna has more explosion. I would I would have taken him there. Um, I know that there was some drama behind the scenes, um, which made uh, them pick uh, where. But to me, like where was not the choice. Matua to me could have could have been a, a super a sub, um, but I think that they missed they missed a good opportunity having Gio out, 
and and uh, utilizing that right wing um, because we we saw that they were overloading on 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 the on the on the left side with uh, with Pulisic. What do you guys think about that drama with Gio Reyna? There was some stuff that came out afterwards. His camp spoke. Greg Burkhalter's camp spoke. Basically, it all just blew up once he got home, saying that uh, what had uh, allegedly occurred was uh, his reluctance to be cooperative and to participate, which is some people actually were pretty divided. In and I'm curious to know what you guys think. Some people were saying, well, he's a teenager. What do you expect? He's going to be rebellious. He's going to think he knows how to do things better. And then uh, other people were like, well, yeah, but he's on the biggest stage. He's on a you know a prestigious team. There's a bunch of other uh smaller not smaller but there's uh, there's other players that weren't given as much of an opportunity they had a smaller opportunity to be there and they didn't make it why wouldn't you make the most out of this so what what's instead of trying to pass i guess make it sound like we're passing judgment on Gio right now for the situation uh how did you guys end up feeling with seeing that you know Gio was was involved in it looks like really just models down to disciplinary issues what do you think what do you think, Gary? I think whenever there's any disciplinary issues, and we're we're coming out of uh we're we're coming out of that now on the on the club side. If there's any disciplinary issues, I think the the manager has to has to pretty much lay down the law and set the tone for for the locker room. Yeah, it's on an international level. You might not see these guys for months at a time, but if there are disciplinary issues, then Berhalter should have just said, "Okay, you're not coming," and that's that. You want to make it, then you gotta clean your act up. Dyer, would you have sent Gio Reyna home or would you have uh, given him a second chance with the What's camp? His, what was the, this, this, the, the, the issue? Uh, essentially, <laughs> essentially, it was, uh, essentially it was that he wasn't participating. He wasn't, you know, giving his all during training. It was all, it was all very vague, obviously, because there was some level of professionalism that Burhalter had to still convey. But I guess it was more of like he wanted to dispel any rumor and get out in front of the situation and be like, listen, he put it as he just wasn't performing up to par. Okay. Like this is a short form tournament. You're expected to give a hundred percent, even while you're training, even when you're off the pitch, because you're at this destination that demands all of your attention. If you see someone that's not giving you that, what do you do? You're mm-hmm. Burhalter. What would you do? Send him to Bashik does where Deli Ali is. <laughs> uh, no, honestly, like, I mean, to be quite honest, if the U.S. did play in a, um, did play better, I think Gio Reyna would have been substituted or even started a match, like if they won against Wales or if they beat England. Uh, but in that kind of situation, I, I would keep him. I, I would have kept him. I wouldn't have sent him home because uh, you, we've seen him what he could do with Dortmund. He 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 can he can change the game. He's explosive. He's quick. Um, I just, uh, I don't think he would be a right choice to replace Wea. I think Wea is a bit of a better player. I think, you know, uh, switch him to the left or put Wea as a striker. Uh, I don't know. I just, it's, a. Uh, I'll keep him. I want to send him home. Uh, he's too good of a player to be sent home. Who the Something fuck that Something Dyer said, Nick, was maybe if they won more of their games, this wouldn't be an issue. Do you do you think that would be true? Let's say they didn't tie those two games and they won just just a single game more. Would this have ever come out, you feel? Or do you think that it would have been something that could plague a future star for the U.S. team? Um, I don't know. I, I think they were comfortably the best team in all three of the group stage games against England, Iran, and uh Wales uh, especially against England they played really well into that the only pretty much chance England had was that Kane header that hit the post in the last minute but either way though I don't I, I don't know why Gio Rain is you know kicking up like the, the kid's been injured like half his fucking time at, at Dorman yeah like, he does he's done fuck all for the for the national team like the kid's acting like he's some next young prodigy which I mean yes he is talented but he hasn't even showed it on the biggest stage like mm. he's injured for like literally half of his time for Dorman he, the kid barely plays now. He's been that he was injured for three years. So uh, I don't know what the fuss is about. Like, there's plenty of other USA players who are talented, well, equally talented, if if not. Uh, as, uh, well, Durant. that's the case. And and again, this is going back to it all started before the World Cup started. His his lack of enthusiasm, 
in the training ground before the World Cup, right? Why, why bring him? Just leave him out. Like Nick said, there's plenty of players out there that could have taken that spot. If the toxicity is there, why bring him along? That's your fault. You brought him. Do you right? think? Do you think it had to do with the name that he has on the back of his jersey? The fact that he's I mean, a- I understand that he is Claudio Reyna's son, and there is weight to that. But I think it looks worse on everybody if he goes and with this than him just leaving him out. I think. Oh, you know what? It didn't fit. You know what? He doesn't fit what I want. Now, where the rumors come out saying, oh, if, Fabio, if, if if Gio Reyna was in the squad, then the U.S. could have done more. Um, well, it goes both ways. And him leaving, leaving him out and U.S. accomplishing what they accomplished now or him not being not giving the time. The same thing happened. So, you know what? Fuck it. You should, you should just leave him out. I think you would have you would have prevented a headache for yourself if you would have just let it out from the beginning, then bringing him along and giving him ten minutes. Because at least, think- it, at least for me, I saw the potential, and I saw the what I would have liked to see in, in on the field, and Gio Reyna would have been it for me. I understand him being injured, injury prone. Pulisic is also very injury prone, but he once you're there. Um, for me, like one, one, the World Cup is once every four years. If you're if you're taking a squad to the World Cup, it doesn't matter, in my opinion at least, it doesn't matter what has happened. Once you're there, you're there. If you had issues with him before, this is not the time to fix it or to punish a player because they weren't giving their one hundred percent at the beginning. If they weren't, leave them out. But you already brought them in, so now you you it's a clean slate for in my opinion. Utilize with the best of what you have and the best players that you have. And in my opinion, Gio Reyna would have been it over where you use the players that you have. If you didn't want him, you should have left him at home. He could have ended up healing one of his many injuries. I'm assuming he must have. Yeah. But, I mean, that's my opinion. Um, I think they fucked up on that. But again, I give him a 7 1 uh, overall. You have so, 7 rating? Yeah, I think I think we're gonna agree on a seven rating, uh, unless you want to go seven point seven four, like Nick had said, and give him the extra point four for the effort. You guys could agree on that. I give him a five. A five? Yeah. They just they just couldn't finish, and I don't yeah, know. they didn't have a real striker. In my they, they just could they just couldn't finish. They, I mean, they should have brought out. They should have brought Alti there. It was problem solved. They <laughs> should have brought oh Alti just to sit up there up top. Who scored an own goal? <laughs> they, hey, there was already a lot of controversy leaving Pifak out, leaving on, leaving out some other players. They bought um, this guy uh, Ferreira, I think, also who didn't do. I don't think he did much, unless I'm completely making that up. But the the striker list issue was something that definitely played the U.S. But instead of focusing on the negative. Let's switch over completely 180. What are some of the positive things about the World Cup that we remember? We'll get to the final. We'll get to that. What was the your favorite moment? And if you don't have one, at least give us what, what a favorite match was for, for the World Cup. You could just spit it out. Um, what that match was, or if there was a specific thing that happened during one of the matches, what was your favorite moment in the World Cup? So whoever, I, I guess, um, Dyer's thinking about it. Nick, I don't know if you have something in mind. But one of the, I think I'll start with, even though I came on late and it didn't end, it didn't end well. I feel like the, at least for me, Richarlison celebrating with Chiche on the, on the touchline and doing this little pigeon dance. Like, I feel like that kind of showed, I, to me that I felt like that was uh, uh, the spirit of what a World Cup should be. Like, yes, there's always going to be the competitive side and, and there's a team that wants to win. But as far as like the, what I remember as far as when I was a younger, being a kid, watching the World Cup, those things would stick out to me because it would show that these people are having like the freaking time of their lives uh, playing at the highest level. So the celebrating with the pigeon dance was actually one of one of my favorite moments for, for the World Cup. And uh, as far as a match, really, the one that comes to mind as far as like the... I could like, I could say the 3-3 um that serbia had 
right? It was Serbia that, that ended up tying 3-3, I think. To Switzerland. Um, that was a good one. That was a really good match. Cameroon. Oh, it was Cameroon. Oh, it was Cameroon, right. So what do you what do you guys think? About your decision? No, or no, about your own. What's your favorite? What's your favorite moment? I think my favorite moment was just to see Morocco make it into the semifinal. You know, just watching uh, Hakimi, you know, dancing with his mom, give, giving a kiss from her on the cheek. Uh, you know, just witnessing, you know, uh, an African nation making it to the semifinal of a World Cup stage for the first time ever. Um, you know, I'm not going to lie. I had Morocco not making out of the group stage uh, with the likes of Croatia, Belgium, and Canada. I don't know. I, I can't remember about you guys, but just to witness that and, and have them proving me wrong and the rest of the world that they could actually do it. Not, that's an underdog moment. And the fact that they got fourth place, um, that, to me, that's probably the best moment or highlight of what I've experienced from this World Cup. What you guys got for us? Gat, Marco, Nick? Uh, I'll, I'll go. Yeah, my moment was just when about was it, uh, was it around 40 to 50 minutes of Kylian Mbappe just being fake in the World Cup final. In the last 50 minutes, the extra time, and the last 10 to 15 minutes of extra uh, regular time. I know it was just like amazing to watch. I was like just so mesmerized, like, literally. Just watching him. There was there's like this one clip where he maybe like the latter stages. Uh, I don't know if it was regular time or extra time. I think it might have been extra time and where he just he took out one defender, he took out another defender, and then he was about to cut in. And then I think it was I think it might have been Romero or one of the Argentinian's defenders just cut him out. Just like like wow, like that's absurd. Like in a World Cup final, this guy just turns it up the last 40 to 50 minutes. Just like genuinely unplayable. It was like mesmerizing. That's pretty cool. Marco, what do you think? What's your favorite moment? I mean, just based off of the little bit I watched, it, I can, I can, the only thing that comes to mind right now is I see the image of the little boy walking up to Neymar when he just lost, he just got kicked out of the world. Oh, yes. Uh, that, was, that was wholesome. That was wholesome. Him, Whose kid, son the kid, was the that? The kid being like, oh, kind of like good game, Perisic. even though he was the one, the one, who was it? Whose son was it? Perisic. Yeah. He was like, he's like, I think like the kid is like Neymar is one of his favorite players, but his pops just like eliminated him. <laughs> but then yet, yeah, still have the like the courage to be like, yo, you're my favorite player, and also sorry to that my my my, <laughs> sorry, my father yeah. just kicked you out of the World Cup. <laughs> you and the two squads you walked in with because you had an amazing squad, but yet yeah, you couldn't do the job. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's the that's the, the what that's what comes to mind. Uh, it was it was an extra time, Nick, that uh, that Mbappe turned it up. It was it was an extra time ch chance that he could have actually um, gone ahead in the in the score um, when he dribbled and he took out those two defenders. I remember that that was something that that I just um, wanted to confirm. Also, get favorite moments <clears throat> of the Qatar. I was World gonna Cup. say I was gonna say Morocco, but I don't want to repeat what uh, Josue also already said. So I'm gonna say probably Croatia. Uh, just in general, uh, just the fact that the kind of squad that uh, they have, the average age on that squad, and they were still able to um, to make it to make it almost all the way. Um, Livakovic showed up, Modric showed up. You know, it just it was it was nice to see that they they almost made it all the way again. Modric, Livakovic, they're good shouts. Uh, Croatia cements themselves as one of the mm -hmm. better teams for at least this part. <laughs> of uh of our footballing history it's it's incredible to just look at what they've been able to achieve uh, some yes. people would say silently but i'm sure that those that actually follow <laughs> would would have seen uh would have seen those signs bless your dire especially, what, what especially when you have um not to cut you off but when you have other so-called golden generation teams that uh can't even get out of the group you have teams like croatia that are just quietly ticking along so mm. And with the old players too. I mean, they're not. They're not the, the players that they walked in with. They're not young. Yeah, they weren't young. They weren't young. I think. I think one of the more pure, at least for me, aside from uh, from the celebration, I think one of the more pure footballing moments of the World Cup. I think the 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 ridiculous free kick setup that the Dutch attempted and then scored against Argentina 
in the final minutes to tie it up. I feel like that was also one of the things where I was like, damn, this is really the World Cup. Like, this is like that the good. audacity. That, that was a, like something that you probably look up or you mention it to someone when you're older. Like, yeah, I remember that, that this happened or I watched this happen. That was something that was uh, incredible. Speaking of incredible, just to wrap it up, a knockout player, a standout player. Uh, yes, the, we had the awards for the Golden Boot and uh, best player of the tournament and best young player that Enzo Fernandez snapped up. Any 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 name that you want to mention as far as this guy's going to shine without, uh, obviously, um, Mbappe aside, there, there are some names that already come to my mind, but I'm curious to, to know what you guys think. Uh, maybe Nick, I feel like you probably have one or two names off the top of your head. Did you say young player? Yeah, uh, any player, just like a standout player. Most likely it's going to end up being a young player because uh, realistically they're, they are someone who the world hasn't seen completely as of yet. So I think naturally it might end up being a young player, but uh, I have a feeling that you probably have a name already. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's obviously your end zones and your, your radios who had really good tournaments, but instead of a young player i thought anton griezmann was like top top this tournament maybe like a top three top five player this tournament i was really running it back to obviously the last world cup 2018 is 2016 to 2018 days it's just interesting because with atletico he doesn't really do much and then with france this this year he you know he's on fire just tracking back to his own box the opposition box attacking the ball laying it off just beautiful touch it was just amazing to see just how he can run it back so I'd say I'd, I'd say Anton Griezmann, apart from like obviously your Messi's and Mbappe's, I thought Griezmann had a phenomenal tournament. A Griezmann phenomenal tournament. Uh, yeah, you already changed your background. You're gonna sing the praises of Amrabat. I'm yeah, guessing. absolutely. I will. I will say that I was definitely included in that pool of people that had no idea who the heck this guy was until the World Cup started. Me too. And uh, he was just phenomenal. He just bossed that that whole midfield for for Morocco. And it was it was great. Any shouts, Dyer, Marco? Uh, I would say uh, the Croatian goalkeeper. Uh, I can't really pronounce his name. Livakovic? Yeah, him. He was outstanding, made great saves in, in the penalty shootouts um, in regular uh, games. Um, so he, he's my standout to me. Although I do want to say I don't think Messi deserved uh, player of the uh, player of the tournament. I think it should have gone to Mbappe. Really? Yes. And you want to back that up with because <laughs> with a hat trick in the final. <laughs> well, that's one. Okay, and he scored a total of eight goals in the tournament. Uh, the majority of Messi's goals were all penalties. Um, he had Messi probably had like two or three assists. Okay, I give him that. Um, yes, he's the captain, best player in the world, but no. Nah. Mbappe led France to a World Cup final along with Griezmann, but he was the only player that showed a lot of grit, strength in the final. It seemed like he it was, wanted it the most. It was Argentina versus Mbappe in the final, let's be real. It was, it was. So I can, I can just hear the moment that Eric put his coffee down when he listens to this in the morning. Like, I can just hear it. Happening. Now, the only, the only thing that I can think of as to why Messi got player of the tournament is because yeah, Mbappe already got the golden boot. I don't know if they, like, they want to, like, you know, not have the same player get two awards. I don't know if the, if that's ever been done in the FIFA World Cup, uh, where a player, huh? They should have. I don't think it should be limited to that, but where where a player like uh, one Golden Boot and best player of the tournament. I I can't remember who or like if there has been anything like that. Uh, I think they just wanted to like I don't know be fair that you know there are multiple winners of certain prizes. But yeah, that's the backup I had. So Marco, going back to you or Marco, you got a standout, a standout player. Um, I'll mention two. One just based off what I've what I saw. Um, Reem for the U.S. Uh, cool. Yeah. At a thirty-five year old defender being the better better defender of the two. <laughs> yes. Your squad. He was the sole reason why the U.S. 
were not considered the youngest the teams. youngest team, but yeah. also just on numbers. He was literally the only reason they were not considered the youngest team because yes. he just brought their average way up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he did phenomenal. I, he, I, to me, one of the, the better uh, defenders, solo defenders, because the other Zimmerman's horrible. But anyway, that based off what I saw um, of the games that I watched, but and overall, just on, on merit and... Uh, the only reason why I'm kind of okay with Argentina winning is Di Maria. Um, I think him being the player that he is, we've seen it. We all know what he can do, but he always gives that extra for his for his nation and for Argentina. And I know he got injured quite early. I, I could be wrong, but I know he got injured in the last World Cup. He couldn't do, couldn't play the final. I think or he no not the final the last whatever wherever they got kicked out. Sure. Um, and then being able to make it to this one. And, of course, he didn't play the full game. But whatever he could, he he tried his best and, and was there. I, I, I'll give it to him. It's astounding. Nice. I think those are fair shouts. Fair shouts. Can we all agree collectively that the final match day for this World Cup was probably the wildest out of uh, all World best. Cups in memory? Can I Can I? Can I best World Cup final. So, <clears throat> and are we going to talk about the final or are no, we just going to highlight it a little bit? No, we, we are. We are just just highlighting, you know, that that final match day okay. for uh, Group C with Argentina, Poland, Mexico, Saudi Arabia, the, the one goal that they needed, uh, Costa Rica qualifying for like those two and a half minutes or, or what was it? I think it was like five minutes when when they went up against Germany and everybody going crazy. Uh, there was also all the drama in uh, in Portugal's group with with uh, Uruguay and Ghana holding out for that. For that 2-0 win, it was uh, pretty incredible. How about the um, that goal? Like, the ball just barely Hop over on. the line against Japan and, and Spain. Bro, that, yeah. that took forever. That yeah. took forever. Yeah, but we can we can now... Listen, we, we missed the World Cup. The World Cup has come to an end, but it comes to the part where we speak about the final Argentina winners, and I think that's it. So moving on. To, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. All uh, right, all right. Argentina, Argentina World Cup winners. Marco, I'll, I'll let you preface uh, our <laughs> our recap of what the final was. So well, you can go ahead. Yeah. So well, for me, this is how the final went for me. So I was gonna watch it with the family. I was like, I really kind of, kind of like don't want to watch it, but whatever. I ended up waking up late, watch it by myself. See the second goal. I watched it until the second goal, and then I walked away. I said, fuck it. I can't watch it anymore. The game is over. I went to do breakfast. Um, while breakfast, I get a ping from Eric saying, Marco Abla. Of course, he's calling me out. But I say quiet. You know what? Because I learned my lesson. If I talk shit, it's going to bite me in the ass. And there's a reason for for me not talking shit. So I, I make my breakfast. I go down, sit down in the living room, sort of continue putting the, the game in the background. Um, on my phone, I'm, I'm not paying attention. I'm looking at YouTube and shit like that when I see penalty. I'm like, oh, shit, okay, whatever. Right. And Bappe scores. I'm like, cool. Have, what, 90 seconds later, he scores the second goal? I'm like, fuck, this is not, it's getting interesting. Let me watch. Now, at that specific time, I'm like, okay, there, there's momentum. I'm going to write something up in case the game ends with France winning. I had like the same thing I did for the NYCFC when we watched him guy. I went into the end, and at the end, I was I put my statement out right. So I wrote something <laughs> that I updated with the the three three, um, but I was never able to send it out. So I want to read it to you guys. Oh, you uh, got the draft. You I got the draft I, exclusive. I, I, I have it right here. <laughs> oh, I, have it right here. I have it right here. <laughs> All right. The message that I was gonna send if. France would have won was all right. The multiverse, the multiverse. Yeah, the multiverse. You you seen the multiverse video where the goal, the the, the kid actually scores the fourth goal. Yeah. Yes, that's hilarious. That's anyway. crazy. Uh, I said I'm sad for Di Maria, but fuck <laughs> Messi, fuck Argentina. <laughs> Messi going to uh, Messi is going to France, um, to see Mbappe pick up his pick up the trophy at the at when when uh, when he uh when he shows it for to the PSG team. So he's gonna not only gonna he's gonna see Mbappe pick it up uh, at the World Cup, but he's gonna see it pick it up at PSG. I said, 
Uh, uh, okay, he's yeah, yeah. France and see it, Mbappe lift lift it one more time in PSG. I'm so happy. Uh, Messi's going home the same way he showed up, empty-handed. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Uh, Saliba, uh, Chuameni, and Camavinga for your first World Cup, and especially congratulations to the toxic bitch of Mbappe <laughs> for scoring a, a hat trick in a World Cup final. Fuck you, Messi. <laughs> that was literally gonna be my message to it, and I couldn't send it because they didn't win it. <laughs> Man, te cayó. Me cayó. Yes, I mean, again, I, I had, I, I said it there. I got, I mentioned, I was, I was sad for Mbappe. I'm sorry, I was, I was sad for for the, uh, if 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 France would have won it in, in the alternate universe, I was sad for Di Maria because I, I know that that's one player that me personally feel that he deserves it, um, and the only one <laughs> that I would ever say I, that's what I'm happy. The only reason why I'm happy for Argentina to win, um, but yeah, I was. Uh, I'm happy that I didn't send that message out. You should. It was good. It was good. I I even shouted out the toxic bitch of uh, of Mbappe for scoring a, th- a hat trick at a World Cup. <laughs> you should have sent that. You should have sent that. Maybe things would have turned around. Uh, no, bro. I had to. I had to hold it because, bro. Maybe I, you were manifesting. I, pff, I've manifested in the past. It has bitten me in the ass. So. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. I got a quote. And I just said it, but I want to quote the whole thing. Everybody wanted to know what I would do if I didn't win. I guess we'll never know. Oh my god! I guess we'll never know. Who? Who? who did Messi really say that? No, okay, that's that's a Kanye quote. Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> who? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that that's a Ye quote. You're right. You're right. So, the World Cup is now finished. We're we're past Christmas. Um. We hope everyone did have a Merry Christmas. All the Argentinians definitely enjoyed their Christmas holidays, uh, this holiday season. Does this win cement Messi as the greatest of all time? Is he the GOAT emoji from now on? Where is Messi for you? And before, I can already, like, I can feel it. I can, like, I can, I'm, I'm like, uh, what is it, Dr. Strange? I'm Dr. Strange right now. And I can see Eric being like, like oh, millions yeah, of, of possibilities. Of, of, of course, Diego's asking the question, so he uh, so he doesn't have to answer. He's not. Messi's not. I'm saying it right now. Messi's not. Okay. Pele is suffering. We need to think of him right now. He is. He is. He is in critical condition, and we need to honor the greatness that is Pele. Okay. Just because you got one doesn't mean nothing. That that would mean that where, where are you in the, the the conversation when it comes to other to the winning athletes? Do you think Jordan just won once? No, he won seven times, seven, and he won them almost consecutively. Okay, he put them up, he put them up, he put up numbers. Okay, to get a to get an ROI of one win out of like what four or five attempts at, at finals? Are you kidding me? ROI. Uh, <laughs> listen, I, I, mm. listen, listen. Pele has more of these bad boys because he has three. All right, three, and he did it. He accomplished it, and no one's ever going to take that away from him. But I want to know for you guys, where does this World Cup victory cement Messi as the individual athlete in the conversation of the GOATs? Uh, I, I really don't think you can compare the World Cup to seven NBA titles, to be quite it's, honest. It's- because the World Cup happens every four years. The NBA championship is every single year. There's no basketball World Cup. There's no football World Cup. Fuck Tom Brady and his seven rings. <sighs> Messi definitely is, is a better athlete than all of them. You were saying something, Nick? Not a better athlete. Okay. I'm, I'm just saying he's not a better athlete than Jordan. That's just... Okay. Yes, I, I agree. I agree. Who I, I mean, either, either way, though, yeah, I think... <laughs> Like Actually, one. I think I think Kobe Bryant is a better athlete than than Messi because because that Kobe man could, that man could kick a soccer ball and shoot a ball. Kobe is. Kobe is. Kobe is. Okay, uh, Marco. Can uh, ask that first. Marco said. Marco <laughs> says uh, no comment, and I I think that's a great answer. Um, yeah. What do you think? Uh, where does this World Cup win cement Messi in the in the eh, 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 conversation? That's not uh, I'm gonna cop. I'm gonna copy and paste Marco's answer. 
<laughs> no comment. No comment. Uh, ask Marco first. I can just like Eric just put down his coffee again, bro. Right at this moment, he just put it down. Right. He either oh, th- he either put it down, he either put it down, or he's picking up the pieces from when he threw it at the wall. And, uh, you answered. I got, I got a better quote. A uh, better quote. Go for you guys. Then 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 the 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 so called goat right now that you guys are discussing. <clears throat> Nico Shavers. The better goat, in my opinion, or the goat now, is Alex Morgan. Alex Morgan has two World Cup champions, one gold Olympic gold medal, one UEFA Champions League winner. She is the NWS champion. She's the goat, bro. No. <laughs> There's one there. She got two. Come on. Where did she play? I don't know. <laughs> I don't uh, know. She, she, was she was at Spurs. She was at Spurs. She was at Spurs. Here's about that when she was there, bro. <laughs> for the better U.S. team, the women's side. <laughs> better no, athlete? But to answer, ass. Ooh, Serena <laughs> but to, Williams. But to, but to answer your question... My opinion, no, he's not the goat. He's one of the goats. I, I, in my opinion, there's two goats in our timeline, in our uh, for right now, and what we've seen. There's two. Um, uh, that's my opinion. That's where I'm gonna stick with, and uh, I'm expecting more goats in the future. But in the past, since I remember watching football, um, because I didn't see Pele, I didn't see Maradona play. Um, but as a, just my own personal memory. And what I've seen, there is two goats so far, in my opinion. I don't follow them. I don't care for them. But there's two, and it's Bessie Ronaldo. You can you can hate me or love you how much as you want. But those that's forever going to be my answer. Um, once they retire, once they say whatever they say, that's that's just going to be my answer. So no, those are uh, two goats, but you don't think one is a better footballer? Uh, they're both different players, in my opinion. Okay. If, you, if you say... Who's gonna be the le- the the goal for the left wing versus the right wing? Okay, left the goal for the left wing is Ronaldo, and the goal for the right wing is fucking Messi. There you go. That's that's the difference between one. You know. From you know what? I'll, the other. I'm that, that, just that's like a cop out though. Huh? That's like a cop out because then you can't make any that's, debate. That's in that's perfectly fine for me. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll give you the cop out answer because they're if they were playing the same role. In the same squad, like let's say the Giroud, the Giroud versus Lampard thing. Or Gerard, sorry, Gerard Lampard. They play the same role, and who's better? That is different than one playing because Ronaldo played a striker left wing role. Messi plays a right midfield uh, center forward role. No, he different was a right roles. wing. It was a right wing. Right wing. Well, sorry, right wing center forward role. Different roles. So you know, I'm I'm just me, gonna wait for the goats. Uh, Kappa, it could be whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, if they were playing the same exact role, then 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 yes, of course, we can have a better discussion, but they don't. So, I'm just gonna wait for fucking Watch Mojo to come up with the top 10 athletes of all time, and then we'll see. Have the, the yeah, they're gonna eventually one. have one and two, <laughs> or actually, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't think they'll ever do that. They won't have them next to each other. I think they'll put like a football player because it's American, so <laughs> yeah, you have no comments. We'll Everything Marco said. <laughs> it's, because, it's because Gat's uh, a goat of all time is uh, Darwin Nunez. Uh, Luis him. Suarez. <laughs> Darwin Nunez this past week. <laughs> Bunch of cop outs here. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> he said a- you either LeBron James or Michael Jordan. You're either Messi or Ronaldo. There's no two sides. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, either way, though, you have. I mean, Nico, Nico saying what Michael uh, Jordan, whatever. but <laughs> Michael Jordan, but <laughs> Nico saying whatever you listen. Hey, hey, if Eric still by any chance has his headphones in after yanking them out, well, after he heard that, um, we'll just we'll just have to pass on the question to the listener. Is Messi now cemented, cemented firmly as the greatest of all time with this World Cup win with Argentina? The one he was missing, the one coveted trophy that he was missing to win with his national side. He now has in his possession uh, after Qatar. And it was a wonderful World Cup. There were some other things that had occurred in between. And uh, we're going to sprinkle those in as we move on to the recap because the Prem is back. And I want to make sure everybody knows it. Premier League is back. The excitement of the Prem is back. Fantasy is back to ruin our lives and uh, put us in uh, depressive moods. 
So going over some of the results, guys, and for those who have watched, and even if you haven't, the, the results for the Premier League game week 17, we started off with Brentford Tottenham. 2-2. Dyer, um, I know that uh, it probably wasn't what you expected to see once you got back from the World Cup. It wasn't what you expected to see once uh, your Spurs side got back together. Definitely not against Brentford, who, um, for whatever reason, Ivan Tony is still on the pitch, despite having a thousand betting breaches uh, that he's been convicted of or found guilty of. So can you, can, can you synthesize in five sentences or less what, what, this, what this match was for you? Well, Maybe three, first, three or less, three sentences to, to summarize this match after you saw the results. Um, first of all, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I was going in blind, basically. I didn't know what kind of Spurs team was going to show up because Brentford has always given us trouble, even in uh, domestic, uh, other domestic competitions. Um, so I wasn't surprised that they tied. I wasn't going to be surprised if they lost. I wasn't going to be surprised if they won. Um, but the first half, they played not so well. Brentford was just attacking them down their throats. Attack, attack, attack. And um, I don't know, the, the connection was just not there. And then in the second half, they just kicked it up. And I mean, I just I just saw it, it looked average to me. It wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, my God, like that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, it was just average. And, and the fact that it was average, I guess I could say it was disappointing. Okay, Gadire, that was 10 sentences. So I stopped right after you were like, I didn't know what to expect. <laughs> so didn't know, you, didn't know you were counting. <laughs> Dyer, <laughs> I think none of us expected. Ob- Nick, you're right. There's a bunch of cop outs. How, how are you going to say they didn't expect them to tie, win, or lose? You have to have an expectation for your team. <laughs> how, can, how can you? You can't. You can't. It's all the expectation was them to show up. That's it. From there on there. <laughs> it, okay. No, it's because it's because like half of the Spurs team went to the World Cup and half didn't. No, they didn't. And, what are you talking not, about? Not half of the Spurs team went to the World Cup. What it was eight players okay. of the went to the World Cup team. There's 24 players in the team. How does that happen? <laughs> oh my god! Do you want to go with like half of the starting eleven that and okay, half? Okay, that's of, different. And the bench. Yeah. Yes, Jesus yes. Christ. <laughs> My All right. God. Well, one of the one of the one of the the, the players that went to the World Cup showed up, which is Kane. He put a goal in. He did put he a got, goal he in. He got two. He almost had the, the winning goal. The no, 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 no. I if, saw that. If it were is it if it weren't for Kane, you guys would be in twentieth place. He's don't he's the sole reason why you guys were able to. Be, the, the, uh, be that dumb, um, <laughs> he's the sole reason why you guys were able to uh, tie that game up. I wouldn't say he was the sole reason. The entire Spurs team kicked up. He wasn't the only one mm. in the second half. I saw. I saw. I, I saw. Most you're basically the first half, second, the you're basically talking. Nah, you're basically saying like uh, how Mbappe was the only player for for France in the final. No. Nah, <laughs> no. I mean, no, no. Griezmann, Griezmann did Hoybier, job. I'm not gonna Hoybier, lie. Hoybier, Hoybier had a fantastic goal too, and that that man was shit during the World Cup. The fact that he was, he was able to score that some goal. Some players so. aren't for World Cups and some or for the national team and some are. Same thing for their national for, for their their team. You know, Maguire, Maguire shit on both, but doesn't matter. Either way, the way, just either way. Wow. he did the DC for England. Either way, we didn't have our starting goalkeeper. We didn't have our our one of our one of our best center backs. He's still celebrating his World Cup win. Um, son, he still has his fracture. You know face mask you know, like i feel like that's really affecting his like shot on target kind of <laughs> yes he can't see i mean it. Oh, i mean okay we, we see it we see it in pro clubs with nick he can't yes. finish He's oh, 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 oh. That face mask. That, so, that's uh, a good way to uh, get off track of what we're talking about here <laughs> <laughs> nah, just, but to answer your question diego i didn't have any kind of expectation i was just wondering what was going to happen that's it 
Well, uh, now that we are not wondering, uh, Spurs dropped points away to Brentford. Yes, they had to kick up when coming back. We we did touch on Kane a little bit and how he kind of uh, picked it back up for his team and and kickstarted them. Does this let this and, and it pulls back to the World Cup a little bit? Kane's legacy. What what's what's left for him? What's what's left for Kane? Yeah, let's Nick. talk about that. We have to talk about that. I forgot. He, I completely forgot he missed that PK. I completely forgot. Right, right. So he misses the PK. It could have changed the entire. Uh, yes, we, hindsight twenty twenty. I get all the cliches. It could change. It could have changed the course for the match uh, for England during during that um, that knockout. What do you think? What do you think, Nick? W- what is left for Kane to do in order to have a legacy? Does he have one? Does he need to do anything else? Because arguably he will probably finish as England's top scorer. Um, he is now. He, passed Rooney. he is now. That, that's what I'm saying. He 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 is arguably going to be untouched. I don't see any other striker stepping up, at least in current in the current moment, to match him for that. What's left? What what does Kane does Kane have a legacy just with that alone, or does he have to do something else? What do you think? Um. If he were to retire right now, he has no legacy. The only thing that can save him is him getting the top or breaking Alan Shearer's record, which I saw a couple of takes that him missing this penalty for England against France could kind of like uh, catapult into him leaving Tottenham. Um, maybe because he probably thinks that, yeah, I just fucked up for my country. Um, Bro, he needs that's that's pretty much say my legacy is to go like Bayern or some shit like that and stat pad trophies or what or whatever. But yeah, I'd say the only way for him to really save his legacy is to just break Alan Shearer's record. And if he doesn't, then he'll probably and you guys know how much I love Kane, but he'll probably be forgotten by history if he doesn't break Alan Shearer's record. He'll be he'll be uh very I think harshly to be fair I think he'll be harshly remembered for missing that penalty. For missing that penalty, because again, the conversation at the moment was another golden generation down the toilet. Yes, there is there is use in this squad, and you have the likes of you know Saka, Foden, uh, Rashford, even Bellingham, and there's a lot of names that'll be around for at least two more, two to three more World Cups guaranteed. But this was the chance in order to do something with players that were experienced and players that were just coming into the squad and actually uh, salvage uh, what was uh, the hope of it coming home. Gat and Marco, do you uh, do you agree with that? If Kane were to retire today, legacy or no legacy? None. No. He has nothing. None at all. What, do you have? What, is, what does he have? He has – he's been uh, golden boot for whatever it's called for the Premier League at once, right? I, I believe twice. Twice. I believe I think- that's it. I'll fact check for you on that one. They That's, keep talking. For for a player like that, I think he, he needs a move, man. Come towards the end of your career, come back and and, and, and try to see if you can do something for Spurs. But right now, bro, you're coming down. What, how old is he? 27, 28? 29. 29. You got another solid two, three years, man. Go out. Get yourself a trophy. Get yourself two trophies. Byron would be the best bet if he wants to win something. Um, they need a striker. Um, you're, 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 you, you are at least confirmed at least one trophy a year. Three mm-hmm. times he's won the Golden Boot. Okay. Yes, Kane, Kane is a three-time Golden Premier League Golden Boot winner. I he did get there. the Golden Boot for the World Cup in Russia in 2018 with the most goals. I'd say, back yeah, to back. I, I'd be, I think Byron is the best bet for him. And he gets at least conferred, conferred one trophy and will a, a, a good fighting chance for the world for, for a uh, Champions League. Let's wrap up the Kane the conversation, Gat. Does Kane need a trophy or is breaking the Alan Shearer goal scoring record in the prime enough? And, that, and I'm saying any trophy, like any league trophy, because arguably he could go to another Prem side. Arguably, he can go to a Bayern or maybe even somewhere in, I, I, I don't know, maybe he could do it in Serie A or whatever, even though that's a lot less realistic because we all know that English players, Jude Bellingham in this England squad was the only one playing outside of England domestically. 
is enough is it enough to just win at least one league trophy for Kane to say yeah I do have a legacy I think he definitely needs one or the other I think if he doesn't break the record I think he's probably going to need multiple trophies but he he definitely needs one or the other if he's not going to win a trophy if he breaks the record I think he'll be fine but if he's not going to break the record he's going to have to move he's going to have to win he's going to have to win a couple league titles and see if he can get that Champions League uh, I think uh, one thing that I do want to, to mention, and I think it's come up in, in previous episodes, there's a dying breed of the, the loyalty player. Kane, uh, aside from his younger days, obviously, you know, with Millwall, Leicester, looking at it right now, he had a, a loan on, to Norwich City. But arguably, he spent the, his entire adult career, almost a, almost a decade, just, just over a decade, at Tottenham the loyal one man club sorry one club man because it looks like he's not enough to bring Spurs that victory that they so much need he has 196 196 goals so far for Spurs in the Premier League and what 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 is Shearer's I think 260 isn't it something like that 260 yeah mm-hmm. anyway Blackburn and Newcastle that's that's going to be rough. That's going to be rough for Kane. That's going to be rough for Kane. Too much time on Tottenham, though. Moving on to two games that I think... No, well, I think we can put these three together. Palace-Fulham. 3-0 win for Fulham. Mitrovic and Marco Silva tricking everybody out, saying that he was goddamn injured. So I <laughs> transferred him out of my goddamn fantasy team. Yes. And he comes back with, uh, what was it, a goal and two assists. Nice little haul. Uh, they're sitting, Fulham are sitting pretty with, with their talisman. Everton and Wolves are the scrap at the bottom of the table. 2 1 win to Wolves. Everton, I'm looking at you right in the camera. You're bored, please. You have a few days <laughs> to, make, to make the same choice. Just sack him and his misery and your misery. The grass is greener on the other side of the pitch, guys. Come on. I made a prediction 17 months and X days ago that he would be sacked by 18. So please, please do. <laughs> uh, Leicester and Newcastle. Newcastle thumping Leicester 3-0. They continue Leicester to do. board, please. Leicester board, do the right thing. <laughs> please. <laughs> Gat, Gat, Gat's going to plea with, uh, with them to sack Rodgers. Newcastle are now firmly in the top three. Yeah, second place right now. In Two. second place, um, guys, is this alarm bells? Is this just a good vein of form? Is Almiron just a little rat that keeps scoring? <laughs> or I think it's alarm bells. I think this is this is to come. This if they're this good now that they don't have like quote unquote big name players, what can they do when they actually do have them? Are you scared of uh, Newcastle right now, Nick? Is it or is it just hype? No, it's not hype. They're generally a really good team. They, they would, and I mean, if you were to put them in Europa League right now, I wouldn't say they'd be the favorites, like even ahead of like Arsenal, United, and some of the others who dropped down. But like I said, if you were to put them in the Europa League, they'd comfortably put up a fight. Even in Europe, if you go around Europe's top five leagues, if you put the, if you were to put them in Serie A, they're probably like just below maybe AC Milan and, and Napoli. On La Liga, probably just below Barca and and obviously Atletico in Madrid. So. I think they're comfortably like just a really, really good team. So yeah. It looks like Newcastle are going to be pretty comfortable for this season. The next game up is against Leeds, and I think it's the perfect primer for them to pick up after the World Cup. It's going to be a very interesting season for them for sure. Southampton Brighton 3-1. Uh Deserby's men getting another win. Sully March and Adam Alana, nobody who nobody expected to be on the score sheet. Wait, Aston Villa Liverpool. Like can we, do we what? Is it Adam Alana like a coach or something like that? Or uh, no? like a player coach? I think he was. Um, uh, but I felt I thought I thought it was like just during that. No, they were considering it. They were considering him if uh if uh what the fuck is his name? Deserve left. Oh, if Potter left. Yeah, they were they were considering um, that Lalana was going to be a player coach if they can't find a coach in time. 
All right. So they're doing pretty good. Thankfully, they did get this guy. I do want to get into Aston Villa Liverpool because there is a social experiment going on and nobody can convince me otherwise. <laughs> there is a bad damn social experiment happening in the Prem right before our very eyes on how bad a player can be that he's actually good. And we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it right now. Darwin Nunez. I think he had uh, I think com- he had the, for the week so far the highest non-penalty XG nope, <laughs> at like, 1.15. <laughs> a complete, complete, like mystifying effect where you just have no idea what the hell he's going to do. And there are several times where he had the better option and he chose otherwise. And then when you expected him, oh, he'll choose otherwise, he still messes up the better option in a pass or something of the sort. Can you, Nick, can you keep up with this level of intense pressure and anxiety with Darwin on the pitch? I know you said you, you love him. You love the guy. You're a big Con- fan. You, controlled you, you chaos. Like, you like the controlled chaos. Is it still controlled chaos? No, right now it's chaos. Right now it's chaos. <laughs> And now it's just chaos. The, the the Fulham cameo was controlled chaos. This is this is chaos. This is chaos. This is chaos. This is Joker burning the money pile. Yeah. What's interesting with him is that I actually bookmarked it on Twitter. I, I didn't know at the time, but he posted the highest conversion rate of any player with 55 plus non-penalty shots in Europe's top six leagues last season. Pretty much saying that he was one of Europe's best finishers. Um, obviously, you have to take that with a grain of salt because you wouldn't compare him like as a better finisher than like Hyungman Son or Erling Holland, just because they're better ball strikers of the football. But it's just weird seeing seeing him right now just not being able to finish. Um, and I, I never I never thought that he would be like as clinical like I just said as, as a son or Erling Holland. But some of the chances were like for the one the. Um, Obviously, the one against City, the one he where he was on the right, I guess, Chan or whatnot, and he just put it wide. And then he had another similar chance against Villa um, yesterday. Um, obviously, I didn't watch his full performance because I, I wasn't able to watch the game. I right. lost like, highlights and clips or whatnot. But he had another chance where he dragged it as well as wide. Um, yeah, I just didn't expect him to just be like this in terms of his finishing, which is pretty disappointing as of right now. Um I think when when it'll start being, it's 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 worrying for sure. But I think when it will start just being actually like catastrophic is when it starts affecting Liverpool much more, which it already has against City in the Carabao Cup. So I, I think unless if you start seeing more performances, um, where Liverpool drop points due to him not being able to finish, I think that's where it starts, um, really being a pretty big problem. Uh, a big issue is it an issue though, Gats? for Darwin Nunez to be regarded as the Uruguayan Andy Carroll. Now, there were there were chants. There were chants that were heard that were pretty audible from the Villa fans chanting to, to uh, Darwin Nunez. When is he going to turn into the English Darwin Nunez instead of the Uruguayan Andy Carroll? <laughs> As soon as he starts, as soon as he gets uh, a couple goals under his belt, he's he's very much a, a confidence player. And if he's not putting the ball in the back of the net, he's just the kind of person that's going to it's going to hit him a little too hard and he's going to try harder and it's just going to make everything even worse. So once he gets that, once he gets that goal under his belt, he's going to, he's going to start kicking up slowly. So you're back up um, on the table and let me make sure that I'm not saying this uh, incorrectly. Um, You just swap places with Brighton one point above Brighton. You're five points behind fourth place with Spurs. Uh, Nick, is this second half of the season going to be an, an easy coast? Do you see your team ticking? I do want to plug in this, the pending signing, the impending signing of uh, Cody Gakpo. A lot of people were saying online, at least as far as discourse, uh, this, this is a very stacked attack right when Liverpool were being linked to midfielders finally. So do, do you agree with that sentiment? Is this an out of the blue signing? Did you see this coming? Are you happy with the idea of Cody Gakpo on your front line? In terms of, uh, I did expect a, a forward signing this January. I didn't expect it to be uh, Gakpo. I knew Liverpool were linked with him. There was a couple of reports back in November where Pep Linders uh, won the Cody Gakpo. He said he was a missing link. Um, per se. Uh, I, I do expect Liverpool to find him a midfielder this January as well. 
But in terms of the Gakpo, it was really crazy. Like the game finished, and then like two hours later, whenever Paul Joyce tweets, he's like Liverpool's probably the most reliable journalist. Whenever you tweet something, it's pretty much done. Um, and then literally maybe 15, 30 minutes later, the deal was announced by pretty much everyone. But in terms of in terms of Gakpo, I, I actually I like him as a player. Um, I, I like him as a player. It, it's just uh, I wonder what, just where he fits long term because I think Liverpool have like an obsession right now with like signing Liverpool. Um, left wing slash center forward players, for example, yeah. Nunez and uh, Diogo Jota, and, and obviously right now with Cody Gakpo. And I like Diaz. his Yeah, and, and, and Luis Diaz as well. So I, I like his short term, obviously, because Luis Diaz and, and Diogo Jota don't come back until, like, late February, early March. So obviously Liverpool can't keep going with uh, Oxley chamberlain or Fabio Carvalho out on the left. Um, but I, I, like, I like him as a player just because he's extremely clinical. Like, if you just look at someone's – and I, I don't take the area division league seriously at all. Like at all. <laughs> oh is a joke. So, I mean, it'll be interesting to see whether he translates um, now, because we've all seen how area division players translate to other leagues, not just the Premier League, but yeah, no, I, I like him short term. I just have questions on whether he fits long-term. Well, I, it's a good deal though. It's, it's relatively cheap to be honest, 37 initial fee rising to a 45, 50. In this market, so it was, it was a relatively good deal. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, good deal. I mean, you can't really, you know. Yeah, for a guy called uh, Cody Wackpo, yeah, it's a pretty good deal. So, it's not like United wanted him or anything. So, I mean, the thing with United is that uh, in terms of him fitting United, I, I don't think he should have been the first option. I think they probably needed more of an out and out center forward, like, uh, you know, Victor Simeon or obviously good World Cup, but. I want to say good World Cup, but just a good match, a good showing by Gonzalo Ramos. But it, it would be worrying that Eric Ten Hag, because he was Eric Ten Hag's, I guess, preferred target. It, I guess it would just be worrying that he wasn't able to land him. But if you look at the grand scheme of things, I don't think Cody Gakpo was, I guess, the savior for Man United. Yeah, I agree. Obviously. Yeah, they didn't want him anyway. So, <laughs> uh, moving forward, though, mm-hmm. as far as the game day with the, the matches, we do have to highlight, and, and, I, and I had the pleasure of seeing at least up until the moment that Arsenal took the lead, Arsenal 3, West Ham 1. The Gunners are firmly, firmly in first place. If I'm not mistaken, I think seven points above second. For now. Castle for now. Um, it looks pretty good. Marco, it looks pretty good. And, and at least from what I saw, I can say uh, during this match and, and watching it and, and the pleasure with the, the pleasure of company, um, with uh, Eric and, and Kyle as well, Arsenal fans. Um, I'm never watching an Arsenal match with Arsenal fans ever again. <laughs> and, um, I do want to say, though, in a positive note, and Ketia, who was not doing pretty hot in the first half, uh, the second half showed that he can, he can do the business. And I think another shout out, and, and I'm just getting ahead of myself, maybe to preempt um, what you can talk about. Uh, Odegaard showing that he can he can pull the strings he he has so far and I'm just relying off of fantasy wise the his last three to four appearances for for the team have been pretty controlling uh, as far as the output for the rest of his team how are you feeling did you get to see the the full match how how are you feeling about the result I love the result. I, I mean, of course, it's a three-one. I would, I would, would one hundred percent love more uh, a clean sheet, but we all know it's a, it's a fluke penalty. Whatever. Some of us thought it wasn't. They called it. It is what was it, it is. Was it a pen? Huh? Was it a pen? I don't think so. Did I, did I, I, I saw that touch, but I also saw the intention, and and I also saw that he tried to kick it, and then when he saw that he couldn't really do it, it just kind of like worked out that he was he was kind of like. He did a long step. I think that's what caught, what, what what made it look more of a of a foul than anything else. But I, I personally don't think it was. And again, it's a fluke one. We I think even Kyle said it. Sal- Saliba has one bad pass, bad moment during the game, and or or, or or in every game. And this was that unfortunately it. But um, I'm not gonna hold it to him. It's, it's it sucks, but whatever. Uh, to me, everything was a was a positive. Even 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 Ketia. Even in Ketia, um, I feel like, and, and I don't know if Eric will agree or disagree with me on this one, but I think we're on like in a, a we're on like in, in, a, in, a, in a, between a, a two hard places. 
when it comes to what we would like to see in Ketia. If we want to give a Ketia the, the chance or not because of the rumors that are floating about the winter transfer window, right? Mm -hmm. So would we prefer not to go with the rumor if we had it in our hands or, 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 or so? I, as much as I love Ketia, I think we should, with, with, which is the rumors, draw Felix coming as a loan in, with possibilities of purchase or with, with a purchase at the end of the, in the summer. Um, but I also would love to give Nketiah more time, man. And, and he's only going to get, if the rumors are true and, uh, and, 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 and it goes quickly, he's only going to get one more game, uh, which is the Brighton game. Um, I would love to see him get more chance, but at the same time, I would prefer to guarantee the victories and the results. And, of course, I can't, they can't do what Gabriel Jesus brings to, brings to the table, but he has he has his own things. And we were joking, because you got left by this by this time, uh, Diguito. I think you didn't see the, the Enquete goal with us. You saw the other no, two I with us, but you didn't mm -hmm. see the Enquete And once he scored it, we were all cheering all the bullshit. And I think Kyle was the one to say it. He's like, if Gabriel Jesus was it, I think he would have turned the opposite way and maybe not even scored the goal. Or if he, or if he turned that way that Enketia did, he would have might have missed it <laughs> or kicked it out. So jokingly, we're like, okay, well, the kid, without even looking, he knew where the goal was. He just kicked. So he has his perks. He, he, of course, we can't compare him to what Gabriel Jesus can do, but he has his own style of play. It's just that because he's not that involved with the with the starting the other starting ten players. Um, or within the game match itself, um, it's, it, it might take him a little bit more time to adapt. <clears throat> Same thing goes with uh, with Tierney. If you saw, I feel like Tierney, as good as, as much as I like him, I feel like he's kind of like slowed down Martinelli um, because there's not much understanding. Martinelli likes to go wide and cut in, but Tierney was taking that role, so then that made Martinelli have to stay, stick around more into the middle. And once you saw the, the, the swap to... Um, to Jenko come in and 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 run that left side. He wasn't even running on the left side. There was, for, I think, for the for, I think it was for the for the Ketia goal. He was in the middle. He run the ball through the middle, nowhere near where his natural position should have been. But that's what I love about him. So, um, and I gave Bartonetti the freedom on the left that he, he wants and <laughs> likes. So, overall, I enjoyed the game. Um, I think we're in, we're in really really good hands. And it's one game at a time, man. One game. Like Saka, Saka said it in the interview. One game at a time. Well, uh, just to interrupt the the interruption, bless your guy for your um, thank you uh, for your sneeze. He's he's scoffing at this result from Arsenal being in uh, in top spot. He said it's nothing to him. And as far as they asked Saka. Uh, I'll end it with this, Marco. They asked Saka, and I'm talking about the panel after the game. Mm -hmm. It was Tim Howard, Rebecca Lowe. I don't know if you guys saw it. Um, we and they asked him, do you think your squad has what it takes? And he's like, oh, just so we're being clear, to win? Like, to win the title. And it's like, I think, I think that already in itself showed, like, they're taking it seriously that even mentioning it could be like a jinx. But I'm going to put you in Saka's position, Marco. Do you think this squad has what it takes to go all the way? Because remember, the only team, and this is just, you know, a little comedic relief for our listeners, just so they could tune in. The I'm only team that hasn't won the title, being top at Christmas, have been About Liverpool. 10 years is Liverpool, yeah. Have been Liverpool. So is Arsenal going to pull an Arsenal or are they going to pull mm -hmm. Liverpool, Marco? I don't feel comfortable answering it yet. That's because, crazy. God. Because... Uh, a bunch of cop outs. Hey, bunch hey, of cop outs. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, I don't blame anybody that says it. Well, I will blame anybody because but now it's me, so I get to say it. Okay, bitches. Nico has <laughs> said it in the past, and I'm able to say it now. You guys don't know what it is because you haven't been in this position before. Okay, not in the past ten years. I have. Who? Who? You and it, what happened? Huh? We lost. Okay, there you go. So, <laughs> I'm not gonna call it out. Give me until the Man City game, and I'll feel more a little bit more comfortable. When is right. that? Magic well, cop February. Bro, that's two months away. At least Magic halfway of the season. At least halfway of the season. When Bunch. is halfway? Because when is, when is actually halfway of the season? 
Uh, week nineteen. Week nineteen. After you after you've played a total of nineteen games. Okay, so we're walking into eighteen. So it would be after the Newcastle game, which would be on the third. So we'll ask you then again. Ask right me there. then again, and maybe I'll give you an answer. I'll just give you the cap out answer, which is, we'll talk about it later. Yeah, I feel like it's gonna be a cap out. <laughs> answer. <laughs> Remember to ask me. Hey, ask okay. ask Eric. Maybe he will give you a different answer. No. Nah. You are currently top. On Boxing Day, well, during the Boxing Day uh, uh, matches, even though it wasn't on on the actual day, um, uh, the the game week has been stretched out for for these next few days. The last yeah, match tomorrow, like the match that uh, the last match tomorrow between City and Leeds. Yeah, I don't, I don't either. I, I, it's nice to win all time, but again, uh, it's also operating under the the uh, effects of the World Cup just finishing literally a week ago. We do have two matches for today, which was uh, Chelsea won to nil, Bournemouth moving on, uh, United and uh, Nottingham Forest three nil, uh, good win. I had mentioned a good win against a bad team at the moment. Uh, Martial coming good, Rashford continuing his nice vein of form. Casemiro, the best center defensive midfielder in the entire world, plays for our club. Thank God. Uh, uh, Graham Graham Souness saying that he he hasn't amounted to much. Uh, which was incredible. That was something that that I was sent um, by by Eric earlier. Uh, as far as like what like the the incredible sound bites that Graham Souness has, as far as being uh, blaming Pogba for everything, I, I really I don't think there's there's for me to say. Gat, any any uh, thoughts on the the game after today? So we can, uh, and then we'll move on to some some predictions previews for Game Week 18 before we wrap it up. No, I think like you said, it was it was a really good win. It was a comfortable win against a, against a pretty pretty bad team. Um, unfortunately, they they bought like fifty players during the during the summer, and they can't seem to be getting the best out of any of them. So it was a good comfortable win. I was uh, um, I think you were as well. We were both surprised at the lineup that uh, Ten Hag decided to go with today. But somehow, listen, respect the man, respect the process because it worked. <laughs> it freaking worked. But uh, no, otherwise it was just uh, just. Another day at the office. Another day at the office. I love it. I love it. As far as the office, there's one bulletin that we haven't seen, Nick, and that is who's been the winner for our prediction game because that was kind of derailed a little bit with the break after the World Cup. Um, the 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 previous the previous quote unquote champion. Um, who who didn't get a chance to show up to the pod and hold the belt was Dyer, was Josue, and um, that there's, rain ended. There's now. an asterisk. There's an asterisk next to that because we we're that still rain. unsure about the scorekeeping so, and all that. As far we're as sure the, about yours, <laughs> as far as the validity, what the fuck are you talking about? As far as the validity about that that champion win, I don't know. But Nick, there was a winner for the following segment. Can you announce that for us, please? What game weeks were there? <laughs> <laughs> it would be wow. uh, 11 to 17. Yes. Okay. Well, you're going to have to come back later. <laughs> You'll announce it after the, the uh, only... Fantasy 15 and 10 and 5. You... Yeah, we'll, we'll, give, you, we'll you... give you some time with you only had, uh You only had like an hour and change. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know we were doing the roundup because I didn't yeah. know what... Which... Uh, more gamies. Yeah, no, it would be eleven to well sixteen technically. Yeah, um, six because seventeen just passed. We didn't do anything for that. Unless yeah, there is, did. unless there in the calculations there isn't five game weeks, then it will have to be eleven to eighteen. We do our prediction for this one, and it will announce it after this weekend's um, games. So do you, do you before before you run into that, Nick? Do you have four game weeks or five game weeks total of predicted? Uh, scores you probably have i, have I think four. it's probably. i think it's four because i'm pretty sure we didn't do game week 14 so that's why we extended it to 17 yes yeah i have four I yeah have four. okay yeah. so okay, then we so, don't have one until this in weekend. that case there is no announced winner i'm uh, <laughs> just um giving you guys misinformation so <laughs> i apologize for that so apologize for swiss, that. swiss asterisk <laughs> still alive <laughs> He, gets, he, has an, he has another asterisk. We just added on another asterisk. He's uh, it, it, it's actually fitting that he's still um, 
he's still champion during like this this twilight zone. A lot of people refer to the week between Christmas and New Year's as the winter twilight zone. So you just don't know what day it is. You don't know who the champion is. It makes sense. It makes sense. You know, you don't know what to do with yourself. Do you continue eating Christmas cookies? Do you today do something is, else? Like... Today is Tuesday, December 27th. <laughs> All right, moving on, moving on, moving on. And All right, moving on. All right, Marco, mute him, please. <laughs> moving on. Uh, we do have some uh, some notes that we put together for our fantasy recap. We're going to go over that quickly, Gats. I did send you some uh, some stuff so that we can uh bless our listeners ears i think that it would be worth going over the watch list there's a few notes that i have for everyone that they can take some uh they can take some tips for this game week 18 a reminder that the game week starts this weekend again the last game for 17 is tomorrow between city and leeds and then it picks back up i think actually uh i need to be sure about this on like the weekend itself oh my god on friday yeah actually yeah it picks up on friday again so there's literally just a day in between and we got to pick it right back up and a lot of the games for the preview which we won't really get into um in much detail it's a lot of top half versus bottom half showdowns so as far as what our prediction game is going to be we're going to focus on those matches we can chat about that a little bit as we give our prediction but fantasy five That'll give uh, Nico some time to tabulate. And for those of you who also uh, listen oh. for that segment. We're not doing we- one more game week? What happened? We're not doing game week 17? Uh, game week 17 is basically done. Yeah, we didn't give any predictions for 17. We, we, had, we, hadn't, uh, we hadn't the chance to get together to give predictions for 17, which basically there's only one game left. Unless we all base our prediction off of game week 17 and get that one last point. No, I, meant, I meant game week 18 because didn't we Oh, yeah, we'll 14? do it at the end. Yes, yes, we'll do it at the end. With the three picks that you had. Yeah. No, 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 no. For the who's winner? Yeah, game week 18. So the, yeah. the game week 18 will... Will uh, solidify solidify who the winner yeah. So in the new the year, in the new year, yeah. in the new year, we'll we'll announce it. Yeah. So All right. We'll, we'll break it off of the three games that you chose uh, before we start recording uh, next. Yeah. Oh, the, the ones that we agreed. Okay, Gad, you want to help me out with this uh, quick fantasy segment? We'll dedicate. Uh, I'm gonna put seven minutes. I'm gonna I'm gonna chop it in half. Fantasy seven, seven minutes or less. We'll start out with the watch lists. Um, they're ordered in case uh, you want to follow along in uh, certain columns. I know Gat can see that visually, but the columns that we'll give out usually defenders first, then midfielders, and then uh, forwards with a few goalkeepers at the end. Um, It's pretty extensive, and that's so that if you want to reset, and that way you can follow the picks that we have uh, now that the World Cup is over and the break is done uh, after the unlimited transfers. These are some, some players that we feel you should probably keep an eye on. You should probably have already in your team or that you can just uh, make sure that you have uh, noted or jotted down for the upcoming game weeks now that the Prem is back. So, Gat, you can take that away. Yeah, so a lot of these names you probably are are going to know. that They've pretty much been on this list since the, the start of the season. Uh, there are a couple of new ones that are sprinkled in there. So just starting from the top, uh, we do have Trippier, Cancelo, uh, we're going to go to Ben White, Robertson, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Reese James, Patterson, and Bueno. That wraps up the, the defense. We threw Patterson and Bueno in there just because they are the cheap budget options to be able to fund the rest of your team. Um, at time of recording, Patterson, unless he, I doubt he would have ro- he would have risen. Patterson was at 4.0 and Bueno was at 3.9, so they're great enablers. Um, they also do start for their teams anyway, so... They're most likely going to be third bench for most of Ionia, but you never know. Something could happen, and they can still get on and maybe get you a couple points. Uh, moving into the midfield column, we have, of course, Salah, KDB, Phil Foden, Kulusevsky, Saka, Martinelli, uh, Rashford, Trossard, Almiron, and Andreas Pereira. <clears throat> the forward column starts to slim down a little bit. Um, we have, of course, the immovable object as that is Holland, Kane, Fraudwin, Nunez, Callum Wilson. Um, and then we have a couple of goalkeepers that you want to keep an eye on. Aaron Ramsdale, the <clears throat> almighty 
Ward from Leicester, and Kepa. Um, just worth noting as well, there are three names that I did intentionally skip over because they are um, some names that you do just want to be careful with. We do have Gabriel Jesus, of course. Uh, he is going to be out for quite a couple months. Madison is also going to be out for some time, leaving um, Lester short on attacking options. Uh, and Mitrovic as well is one you want to be careful of because he does have four yellow cards. And keep in mind, the rule of the yellow cards is not up until game week 19. It's until your team has played 19 games, uh, which I have it pulled up here for Mitrovic specifically. Game week 20 is when he'll complete his 19 games so it's still possible that he gets one more yellow card he's going to get suspended so you just want to keep an eye on that um when you do your budgeting and your list of, of players you want to bring in uh, one one name that could also come good uh thanks to his goal today even though i'm not sure why he was taken off early maybe because uh eric can have had seen the game was one but anthony martial did show up in a few drafts there for some players for some managers, uh, sorry. And, of course, the wool was pulled over our eyes, like I had mentioned by Marco Silva, saying that Mitrovic was a doubt. He did haul with a 15-pointer. He is still going to be the main talisman. It looks like the injury isn't there, even though he had been struggling a tiny bit before and during the World Cup. And it looks like probably Mitrovic is going to be, if not the second, definitely a very solid third forward slot. Well, um, I will say I'm, I think it might have been in the presser after the game. I have to pull up the tweet because I, I just glanced at it earlier today. But he did say so himself that he's still feeling it with his ankle a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. But clearly not enough to keep him off the pitch. But you never know. When, when something is still niggling, it, it'll, it, it may get to the point where he just he needs to take care of it. So just keep an eye on him. So some pointers. Uh, going off the templates for now, the template team uh, – that a lot of actually a lot of teams have at the moment it, it could reap some awards but you don't want to go off too crazy right now the gaps between a million to 500k 500 to 250 250 to 100k they're actually pretty small the gaps are somewhere between 20 and 30 odd points which is still very doable the pack is still there you don't want to fall behind getting too cheeky with your picks especially now i got very 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 punished by leaving trippier as a first sub thinking that maybe even Reese James, if he didn't make it out to play, I'd get the auto sub. And then I got smacked in the face with a one pointer Reese James re aggravating the same knee injury that kept him out for so long during the match. He didn't even make it to 60 minutes for the points. So that definitely blew up in my face. As far as some of the premiums, Salah and KDB, it looks like cities fixtures actually benefit your team a little more. They have these two fixtures coming up uh, with, uh, with leads starting tomorrow. And the third one is, you could consider that a, a bit difficult, but there's a double on the horizon. It looks like at least the fixture difficulty is there. Well, we've yet to see that, what KDB is doing. Salah already uh, gave his owners a nice return with, I think, a goal and an assist, if I'm not mistaken, and some bonus points to, to mix in there. The best 8 million mids to choose for your squad in this particular order, actually, because um, putting this together before gimmick, the gimmick had started, wasn't that bad. Uh, Almiron, for his price and the form that he's in, should be the number one name in your midfield. Uh, aside from Andreas Pereira, who really isn't contributing, he's more of an enabler. But if you want points and if you want a good price, it looks like Almiron is still the, doing the business. Saka as well had a very good showing. Um, and it was a shame that that penalty wasn't given to Arsenal because... Well, it, it would have been, <laughs> huh? It wasn't a pen, right? Right, it wasn't a pen, but I'm saying it off of the uh, it would have been nice to see who would have taken it. Oh, and, oh, uh, and if, I would I, I would have thought it was Saka, right? Right, and it would have been nice to see Saka take take that pen and and essentially cement his his spot as the penalty taker because you never know, maybe uh, things changed up when they came back. Uh, so far, prior to the World Cup, he was the penalty taker. I do also, I think also there were some rumors that uh, Odegaard can probably take them as well. But still, Saka was number two. Martinelli, number three, also got an attacking return. 
Rashford fourth in this list of eight million mids who also got an attack in return. The they are United have some of the better fixtures during this festive period that are going to come pretty thick and fast. Uh, Madison was up there even though he didn't really do much. It looks like Ward is probably the only Leicester asset. I know Gat had mentioned that worth worth having. The only Leicester asset really is going to be Ward just because he's cheap enough for other players to be on your squad. Trossard has that double game week, potentially a triple coming up for Brighton, which you do want to take advantage of. There's not many of those. Kulusevsky and Odegaard and Foden even out, or sorry, round out to the list because it's an odd number of uh, names with nine. And those are some of the email emails they want to have. And Ketia solidifying that top striker spot for Arsenal. It's good to see if he'll be given the, the opportunity to do so. He did come good during this match. Like Marco had mentioned, he has one more against Brighton coming up to see how he does. Whether replacement comes in or not could be dictated as to how good Enketia is going to take his chances now that he's being provided them. Don't get too sucked in, though, as, as far as uh, who is going to be that main striker role. There, there are, and this is just Arsenal specific, them being the top team right now and their assets being on fire. It looks like uh, Martinelli, Saka, and Odegaard are more than enough or definitely plenty to get some attacking returns and points for you. Um, you don't have to play that roulette, really. If you want to gamble and you want to make Enketia your third striker or even your second striker slot, that's completely understandable, knowing that it's a bit of risk. As far as the template, uh, I mentioned the template a little bit earlier as far as shying away from it. I'll read out what names have been the most uh, popular as far as selection. So right now we have Ramsdale and Ward with Kepa as the third, third most popular uh, goalkeeper selected across the back line, Cancelo, Trippier, Alexander Arnold, Patterson, and Bueno. They've been really popular just because they're the cheapest, like Gat had mentioned. Across the midfield, KDB, Saka, Martinelli, Rashford, and Almiron. That's a little bit quick. So KDB with the, I guess, with the less of an impact for being rotated. Uh, we don't know whether or not Foden is going to come back. Some people have been speculating that it could have even been also a disciplinary issue. Because prior to the three matches that he didn't start and play um, before the World Cup, and then he just suddenly played 90 minutes, he had started all 11 games for City. And he was pretty much one of the first names on the on the team sheet for, for Pep. Saka and Marnelli, as I mentioned, they're doing the business for Arsenal. I, don't, I really don't think you can go wrong with them. And, and especially after the question they asked Bukayo in the post-match, I think these guys have it seriously that they, they, need, to do, they need to do the bits every single week. And you want that kind of mentality from uh, a fantasy asset that's going to be on your team because that gets you points. Rashford looks like a name that is going to come up a, a bit more often in the next game weeks. I would say hopefully he's going to be a good pick for maybe the next two or three. And then Almiron, again, showing that he is the real South American GOAT, the only South American GOAT as far as I'm concerned. Haaland, Darwin, and uh, Greenwood. Greenwood, I think, was just coming up as far as being an enabler. For some, um, the team value at this point could be reset. I know that there's a lot of managers that had a really high team value going into the World Cup break, but if you don't happen to have it, it's okay. You can have Greenwood, who is this, um, I think he's secondary to Gelhart probably, as far as a, a lead, leads attacking choice, since Bamford isn't yet up to speed as far as his fitness. But Holland and Darwin pretty much... It looks like if Darwin can start putting away these chances, he would be a very, very scary fantasy asset because he would have hauled. I would I would guess with two goals that he puts in, maybe even an assist on that one chance. I don't know if you guys remember. He like took an outside of the foot shot when he had Salah. It was like a breakaway. He was sent the ball right over the top. Beautiful ball, really. And instead, he chose to shoot it, which the goalie did, did take a good save. But he had Salah running behind him onside on the left channel, and he decided not to do that. Chaos, indeed. As far as some defenders, Ta, Rabo, James, Reese James, no longer in contention, but I think Ben White is also a name that could actually provide you some value as far as a cheap defensive pick who has a good possibility at clean sheets. I think that penalty was a bit harsh as far as the clean sheets holders for Arsenal defensive assets. And uh, any... Of course, any alternatives to Rashford, if you do want to go that route, you can try your luck with Foden, see how his rotation's going. Some people, instead of KDB, obviously going for Salah and then Trossard giving you a bit of 
security with the Brighton matches. And that is our roundup for the fantasy segments. Um, as far as our draft league guys, I'm going to be real with you. The only two. No, that no, are, go ahead. Let's go. Let's go, go over it real quick. The only two that are playing our goddamn draft league are literally Gat and myself because nobody on this bench has made a single movement in like three weeks, four weeks for that matter. And I mean, four actual game weeks, not just the last month that the, the world cup has been played. Uh, as it's not over yet. There's still a city game tomorrow. Um, I do have a head to head with, I haven't checked the, the, um, I have not checked what the score is so far. Yes. I'm trailing Gat so far 46 to 65. I'm riding on three, three, uh, city assets for tomorrow. So we'll see how that goes. Josue is trailing uh, Eric, 30 to 46. And it's a very, very tied, very close. Um, sorry, it's a very close tie between the uh, mild excitement uh, for Marco and Nick. Marco is marginally winning 29 to 22. I have three city players uh, to play tomorrow. So. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Right now, the, the standings. <laughs> Gat in first, I'm in second, Marco in third, Nick, Josue, and Eric round out the bottom three. And that officially wraps up our fantasy segment for this episode. One last thing, actually, before you do actually conclude it. Um, um, everyone else probably has Misinformation again, listeners. Sorry. Misinformation. <laughs> Everyone, everyone else on here probably hasn't seen it, but they, because of the World Cup break, they did um, introduce what's called a second chance league um, in fantasy. So pretty much everyone is is starting from zero. So for some of you who probably fell off and haven't made any changes, the the first almost half of the of the season, you are automatically into the second chance league that the uh, that the fantasy team automatically instituted so you guys it's a great opportunity for you guys to just get back into it and see what uh see what you can do good question how long have you known that mm, i don't know when did they announce it like a week ago <laughs> so t- today you decided to do that like you could you couldn't have text today in a bench pod or something that in the group mm. chat no 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 of course not of course no. not no, no. No, because because you're right. Because Dyer, how how do I put this? In fairness, I was going to mention it earlier on when we were supposed to record, but that didn't happen last week. So, yeah, that was that's that's out of our hands, out of our control. Dyer, come on, you can't be nitpicking. Anyway, moving forward, I think Dyer has like some sort of uh uh asterisk champion complex so just to be, make sure that that gets washed off nick can you please enlighten us as to what are the three games we are predicting for game week 18 yes yeah, so we are predicting west ham versus brentford newcastle versus leeds and brighton versus arsenal so let's start off with west ham versus brentford dire west ham home correct uh, I don't know. So I'm gonna go with one West Ham to Brentford. Diego, I think I'm gonna go with two nil Brentford. I think West Ham scoring against Arsenal was very, very fortuitous. I really don't think they have anything. They got nothing in the tank as far as their attack. And obviously, as long as Ivan Tony is still walking free on the pitches of England, um, they actually did say that he probably won't get any sort of like a punishment or official decision over all these breaches up until like what game week 20 or something like that. Like some people are honestly like saying like he has three games left to do as much damage as possible before he either gets fined or he gets suspended or what have you. So I'm going to say a comfortable 2-0 away win to Brentford. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm going to say Ivan Phony one West Ham nil. All right, and I myself predicted a two all draw. Oh wow, Marco. Uh, three zero Brentford. All right, 
Move on to Newcastle United versus Leeds United. Dire Wolves. Oof. Uh, I think it's going to be a strong game, but I just think Newcastle is just going to come out on top again. I'm going to say another 3 0 win. All right. Diego. This is tough. This is tough. Um, Leeds are undefeated at St. James Park. So Ever? that would be very interesting. Um, however, 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 Leeds, however, they suck. Yes, however, <laughs> Leeds, and uh, they've not gone four matches consecutively without losing at St. James Park in their history. And looking at what Newcastle did, and also depending on how Leeds do tomorrow, I'm going to say it could actually be, I'm going to go 4 1 Newcastle. I feel like Leeds could get a shot goal here, but I still think that they could do do they, they could do a lot of damage for one. Right. Yeah. Four nil Newcastle. All right. I'm going with a three one Newcastle. Yeah, uh, second I second you on that. Three one Newcastle. And the last game that we have chosen is Brighton versus Arsenal. Um, Dyer? As much as I want Arsenal to lose and drop points, um, I feel like there's going to be a good game. I'm going to say 2-2. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to give you a stat. I'm going to give you a stat, Dyer. Wait, wait, wait. You, you just said as much as you want Arsenal to drop points? Yeah. No, to lose. To like lose. to lose all right. Oh, I thought you said drop points. I said I said drop points. Oh, I said, okay. I said drop <laughs> points, but I, I think it's going to be a draw too, too. So they do drop points. I mean, they're still going to be on top of the table, so. Uh, but you drop points, though. <laughs> I guess so, if you want to put it that way, they're still on top of the table. Uh, so, all right, ready? Brian have lost just once out of the last five home games against Arsenal. And Brian are one of three teams – Mm-hmm. The Arsenal have lost more Premier League games than they've won. The That's... other two teams, the other two teams are United and Liverpool. So against United, Arsenal have a losing record. Against Liverpool, Arsenal have a losing record. And then the second most, the, sorry, the third most in that list is Brighton with four four losses against Brighton and only three wins, which okay. I think is very ominous. However, for the stat. can I change it then? Hey, hey, hey I, I, I was going to say, but you beat me to it saying that you wanted them to drop points. You didn't want them to drop points, but they still drop points and trying to make sense of it. So sure, Dyer, <laughs> go ahead. 2-1 Brighton. All right. I guess we're just allowing people to change uh, points then. Well, all right. well, it's only fair because he, he's giving me the facts now. The stats. <laughs> I literally said, you know okay. I think of stats, right? <laughs> I already said the score, and then he wanted to mention the stats. I say, you know what I, I know what I say of stats, right? They're false. Exactly. All right, uh, who's next? Uh, Diego. This is tough because all of the stats that I'm seeing are are very heavily skewed for the the other team uh, in terms of whoever Arsenal is playing, as far as like Arsenal's record on New Year's Day. Brighton's record as their last game of like the calendar year. Um, but I just can't, you can't ignore our form. I think, I think Brighton are, I think Brighton might, Brighton are going to score, but I feel like Arsenal have what they, what they need already to convince themselves that they can put this game away. Cause West Ham did that just now. And it was in a very, I, I think obviously a, a pretty harsh decision um, I'm gonna go two one Arsenal, squeak out, squeak out the win. It might be ugly, but I think they could squeak out the win. I, I don't see Brighton having what it takes. I think it's gonna be a cracking way to end 2022. I think it's gonna be a nice little goal fest three two Arsenal. All right, I'm going with two nil Arsenal. Uh, 3-1 Arsenal. Oh, all right, now all that is left is... Zero. What? So all that is left is Eric's predictions now. Oh, so he, he, te- he texted. 
Yeah. Oh, did he? Yeah. Nah, I'm, yeah, he, I'm up on D and D. He right. said uh, West Ham two, Brentford one. He's the only person that chose West Ham to win, actually. Right. New Newcastle three, Leeds one, Brighton no, Arsenal three, with a smirk emoji. <laughs> All right. No faith, Marco. He he has faith in the clean sheet, but you don't. That's crazy. Uh, you know, respect, sometimes, Marco. Sometimes respect. Sometimes we get stupid penalties. Man, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes. Any uh, any other things that you guys want to mention now that the, that we're at the end uh, of this episode? Uh, one thing I do want to bring up: Ronaldo currently unemployed, getting sacked by getting sacked from the World Cup and sacked from his squad in the same month. Uh, our, uh, looks like um, if uh, I was about to say Arsenal, because if he had gone, like there was actually some some veracity to the ridiculous idea that Ronaldo was going to join Arsenal as a free agent. But thankfully, it looks like that's not going to happen. Uh, it looks pretty much like he's going to go to Al Nasser and he's going to be um, literally cashing in it. So does that mean we will never see Cristiano Ronaldo play on live TV ever again? <laughs> or I probably won't watch a game. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Highlights on YouTube. <laughs> like, yeah. the, like the one highlight that everybody saw about Xavi, we're going to see that one highlight of, <laughs> of Al Nassar <laughs> FC. <laughs> Uh, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a wonder cross from Nani into into Ronaldo's head. <laughs> we're, we're definitely gonna see that guy from the World Cup that um was like, "Where's Messi? Where's Messi? He'll probably be at one of those games." Where's Ronaldo? Where's Ronaldo? I hate that guy. I'm gonna say it right now. That dude was so freaking annoying. Because then afterward, <laughs> afterward he shows up with an Argentina kit and saying that like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I'm the I'm the worst I'm the worst Messi guy. I'm here cheering for him." Like, where you got you got to keep that energy. You got to keep that energy. Yo, what's what's that video of the of the Moroccan girl? <laughs> Bro, have you seen Who's that? Who's Cristiano Ronaldo? Dude, she got like mentally like abused actually. Yeah, she got she got pretty like yeah. uh, like the clips on TikTok it was like her like where's Ronaldo? He's crying in his car and then it was like Mbappe turning around and shit. <laughs> this is the funniest shit ever. But, yeah. yeah. There was a lot of people that weren't uh, that weren't happy with uh, with the Morocco fan. Uh, there's the the famous uh, the Croatian woman that was uh, parading around in her in her uh, her swimsuit outfit. She was very proudly uh, holding the Croatian checkers uh, for um, for Modric and the crew. There is the petition that uh, France fans had started to sign 235,000 signatures for the final to be replayed after a clip came out virally that Messi's goal to win win in extra time should have been disallowed because there were two other Argentinian players from the bench on the field during the, the action of play. And then Argentinian fans responded by making their own petition for France fans to stop crying. And that currently has 735,000 signatures uh, far eclipsing the um, 765,000 signatures at the time of recording um, for them to stop crying. Nick, I'm raising my hand like I'm a student in the classroom. What's up, Nick? I, I We didn't discuss about him, but uh, Emiliano Martinez, do you guys think he gets a bigger move club-wise? No, no. no. And I actually, I'm going a, I'm to a be straight up. Eric Eric has said, he has he's verbally said that he loves this shithousery. But oh, me too. I freaking love that guy. But I'm gonna say, man, just for holding, just for making every trophy that he holds into his in, into his uh his groin into, area into into a makeshift dick just by holding it. I guess. I mean, I don't know. There, there was there was something that uh, Emery came out saying that oh, I'm gonna speak with him or whatever. Which again, I don't think is Emery. It like. I don't know. I guess if he wants to, because he's a manager. But again, he did that when he was with Argentina, and I feel like that's a like a different thing. But I mean, Martinez. I, I don't know. I think is it me or he's been kind of like mid like the past like eighteen months. No, ago. but that's the thing. He had he had a fantastic breakout season, and then Villa were he was not doing great with Villa, and it could have also been the team. We can't blame 
uh, the form for the back line entirely on Martinez's well, shoulder, to be fair. Yeah. Well, also, he was under Stevie G the entire time. That and too. Ed, and Dean shit. Smith, I think, at the, right before that. Yeah, Dean Smith before that. Who, coincidentally, was sacked by Norwich today. So, goes <laughs> to show that. Um, I don't know. Uh, to answer your original question, do, does he get a bigger move? I don't think so. I don't. I don't, I don't think. So. Uh, no. I mean, it, the, rumor the, said Byron was looking for him, but I don't think. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, well, they're desperately in need of a, a goalie because Neuer doesn't know how to fucking ski. That's why. Yeah, that was uh, unfortunate. Uh, the thing with like with people now is that like, man, he's he's in the history books now. Literally, like, regardless of what he does club wise, like he, he can do he can do fuck all club wise. He'll rem- he'll be remembered like very well as like. As well, like you, he'll be he'll be well, remembered. Well, like, he'll yeah. be remembered for the greatest save of all time. He across, is across yeah. across sports, the greatest save of all time. That is that that is going to be a crowning moment because to do that in literally the last the last dying seconds of extra time, it's it, it is it's incredible. But as far as maybe his club career, I don't know. I think I think he he would pr- pretty much remain at Villa unless he chooses. To Go sideways, and maybe a club like he, he might not. He there. might not get a. He might not get a quote unquote big move, but if he he probably does better than Villa. Like he probably repa- replaces like Fabianski, for example, at West Ham or, or something like that. But not, not like a really big move to like a top six. Oh yo! Oh my god! I see. I see the vision now. Watch this: Emiliano Martinez to Juventus in two years. Oh yeah, in two years, two years, in two years. Once Wojciech Chesney gets up out of there, he's thirty. Uh, Miliano, he's thirty years old right now. He'd be thirty-two. He'll still be, you know, good and agile. Yeah. So we'll see, and he'll be with his uh, uh two of his uh World Cup winning teammates, Di Maria and Paredes, if that were to happen. Is there another Argentine guy? Not anymore. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think that's it, guys. Any any other final final thoughts? Anything you want to? It's been a while since we recorded, so I know it's going to be a, a bit of a of a of a hefty one as far as uh, the length of recording. But any parting moments? I, I just want to say for Mexico, even though I did um, rag on them. Having that that free kick go in was was a magical moment for myself. That was that was nice, just to see the the possibility of moving on. And it was a very it was incredible to live at least as a fan. But that's really it. I don't know if you guys have any parting parting thoughts. Parting thoughts. I'm happy that Premier League is back. <laughs> happy back? Yes, I'm happy. That's basically it. Nick, I'm the opposite actually. <laughs> Man misses the World Cup. I do actually. I just watched the greatest game in history, and now everything is just it feels underwhelming. Regardless of Messi's win or whatever, just like that game itself. Like I'm just I'm just glad I was able to watch. So now I have to watch fucking Liverpool try to break down. I don't know. Leicester's low, low block this Friday. You know, yeah, like Nunez's 15 missed chances. <laughs> Either way, though, like any any club football now is like damn. Like how am I gonna go from that to this? But yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Dire parting thought. Uh, I'm glad the Premier League's back, but it's kind of like, like when you asked me about the Spurs game, like I, I, I didn't, I wasn't too hyped about them. I'm not gonna lie. So I, I want to get that hype back. I want to get that hype back in. Pick up a maybe, team. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Leicester's your backup team, right? You want to go for them, maybe? Exactly. Yeah. There. Are you kidding me? I'm going. I'm going for Lester to sack Rogers. That's the only way I'm going for Lester right now. Yeah, they haven't many. I as far I think uh, the list was there was twelve managerial sackings during the World Cup. Um, Luis Enrique, uh, Tite left, Fernando Santos left, Tata Martino was sacked. There's a, a lot of um, Roberto Martinez left Belgium. So a lot of a lot of teams lost their managers. Uh, uh, Gap, parting thought. Uh, a couple, I think, on an international level, just uh, keeping my head up, moving on, looking towards the Copa America, and hopefully Diego Alonso decides to play the right players in the right formation this time around and not fuck us over. 
uh, on a club level. Um, excited that the Prem is back. Great game today. Looking forward to what uh, continues to progress. And on a personal thought, just looking forward to the new year. I think it's been a, it's been a fun holiday time. So hopefully get to see you guys um, more often than the new year in person. I know we couldn't do so today, but yeah, just looking forward to 2023. Thank you listeners for hanging with us in 2022. Fantastic summer, a wild World Cup. We're back with the Prem. We hope you had a wonderful holiday, a Merry Christmas, and we wish you all a fantastic start to the new year. We are the Bench Warmers, the Bench with a Voice, where the bench is always born. Peace, everybody. Peace.